A real leader. If you are who you say. Knows that destiny is beyond his control. And it was fate that brought us here. And accepts that. Then, my path is clear. There's a high price to pay for wielding such power foolishly. Time to end this. Sora is trapped in the final world, stripped of his powers of waking and unable to return home. This is the punishment as the ultimate price for abusing the power of waking in order to restore the hearts of the fallen guardians of light when the darkness prevailed. This resulted in a singularity that tore the fabric of time and resulted in a reset from what was apparently the destiny that was supposed to unfold. With the final retrieval of Kairi in Kingdom Hearts 3 Remind, Sora finally suffered the ultimate price as this was him breaking a law of nature numerous times. However, with Sora changing fate and becoming trapped in the final world as a result, he would then go on to meet Yazora, in which their encounter leads to the Yazora Paradox. What's up guys, it's HMK once again with another 5th Dimension Kingdom Hearts 3 Remind video, tackling an aspect that when thought about leads to a contradiction and possibly a revelation of what destiny and fate truly is and who played a part in the encounter between the sky and the night sky. This one is going to be twisted, so for the safety of hype, I'm going to ask you to strap on in and open your mind. It's time to dive directly into the darkness. The thing about Sora, meaning Azora, is that it's actually a crazy paradox when you think about the concepts of destiny and fate, and what is truly meant to be, and what is defying what is apparently prophesized. As in Kingdom Hearts through your mind, when Yazora converses with Sora, he states that their meeting was orchestrated by destiny, and that it was fate that brought them to each other. Echoing this motif is Yazora's journal entry, which reads, A young man who was destined to meet Sora. His true identity is shrouded in mystery. So, Sora meeting Yozora was destiny. It was fate, right? Well, that's all well and good, but the problem is, how can this exactly be fate for them to meet when Sora becoming trapped in the final world is a punishment for defying and changing fate? If it was always destiny for Sora to meet Yozora, and the only way for Sora to come into contact with Yazora was altering fate, altering destiny, altering history that led to his punishment, then what is the truth? As if Sora didn't defy destiny, if he didn't use the power of waking after the defeat of the Guardians at the Keyblade War when the darkness prevailed, then he would never have met Yazora. Yet that was destiny. And that is the paradox we need to consider, my friends, as it seems that fate is something that can be changed by abusing the power of waking and breaking that law results in a punishment. Yet breaking and changing fate allows for a meeting that was dictated by fate. This embedded contradiction is what I call the Yazora paradox within Kingdom Hearts, as the conundrum is born from his meeting with Sora. That truly then makes you wonder about the concept of destiny and what is the true destiny that is supposed to unfold with this line of events. As if this was truly within the design that was foreseen in the Book of Prophecies and the Master of Masters, as there is an incredible clue that pertains to that notion, then we have to think about what was truly written in that book. Could it be that the missing page, or the concept of the missing page, you know, something that was torn out of a book, thereby possibly removing the line of events, or at least hiding it? Could that be part of the conundrum? With Sora meeting Yozora, was this always meant to be through the master's design? Is that why he was there during the Yozora secret movie in base Kingdom Hearts 3? As we do know that this is a recurring dream of Riku, 
thanks to Kingdom Hearts 3 Remind, and that Sora's eventual clash with Yazora does take place within the same setting of Shibuya as with Riku's dreams. Being in that moment of time, within what is perceived as a momentarily altered final world, then it must mean that their meeting must be a part of the true fate as it is within the master's sight and it must be logged in the book of prophecies in conjunction with the gazing eye. So this leads into the question of insight as the whole lead up to Sora's disappearance after saving Kairi and the others with the power of waking. It was heralded as a punishment, a price, and that Sora was using the power foolishly and that he was going to suffer a fate for messing with fate. The long and short of it is that it was portrayed as something he was not supposed to do, yet it was still destined for him to get from point A to point B to meet Yazora. And then when you think about the components and the entrail of everything about Sora and Yazora's meeting and what can be conceived as the true fallout is that Yazora isn't inherently an enemy and that he should never even be in the same sentence as the word evil or villain and that this first true encounter between these two characters can lead to something of a team up or even a friendship down the line, especially given their dynamics, connections, and yes, duality. I definitely see Yazora being the yin to Sora's yang. What I'm trying to say is that the end game of Sora coming into contact with Yazora should not be viewed as something of sort of a punishment or a price rather than a reward. And you know who echoed this notion? Zigbar, or rather we should say Lushu, that he stated from the beginning of Kingdom Hearts 3 that in the end, you will finally see what destiny has in store for you. In fact, your reward might be right around the corner. Now this exchange between Sora and Lushu, Zigbar, whatever, should really be noted as the context can be taken in many ways. Of course, when Lushu says that at the end, with Destiny having something in store for Sora, a reward in fact, this reward can be the meeting with Yazora that Sora will find at the end of the journey of the Dark Seeker Saga within the final world. And what is even more haunting is that Lushu even primed this journey that would lead to the end game of Sora's disappearance and encounter with Yazora, telling him, find the hearts joined to his. Which is exactly what Sora did when using the power of waking to restore the Guardians of Light in the climax of Kingdom Hearts 3 and Kairi in Kingdom Hearts 3 Remind. And if you want to take even a step beyond when Lushu says that your reward might be right around the corner, that can be looked at Sora coming to be aware of Yazora in the very next Disney World after Olympus, Toy Box, as it is right around the corner for Sora. And guess what else happens in Toy Box? Young Xehanort telling Sora the same thing Zigbar did. What this leads me to believe is that although it is presented as Sora breaking a nature taboo by altering fate, he was actually following the intentions of the true fate, that Sora breaking design was indeed a part of the design itself. Which is why his words to Xehanort about destiny is beyond the control of anyone. Many, along with Sora, perceive that he defied destiny in restoring the fallen with the power of waking, but in a grander reality, it was all truly part of destiny's higher call, and that Zigbar who we all know now is Lushu, the true wielder of the Gazing Eye, the no-name Keyblade, played a part in ensuring that this would play out accordingly, leaving behind the breadcrumbs to lead Sora into his endgame with Yozora. What's more is that if this is true, then Lushu truly leads on more than what we could have known thanks to his interactions with Luxord, the gambler of fate himself who turns out to be someone in service and heavily connected to Yazora. It could be possible that Lushu intentionally instructed Luxord to locate the black box to set him up in a state of mind of growing suspicions within the new organization 13 
and of Zigbar, eventually and effectively acting as the catalyst causality that would lead him to the act of bestowing the wild card to Sora during the events of the Keyblade War that will also play a part in Sora's connection with Yazora and the fate within the final world. With this paradox in mind, it may be that Sora is not the anomaly that many have perceived before. Rather, he is a vital component in the grand design foreseen by the Master of Masters. So vital that he is needed to be the one to attempt to defy destiny in order to encounter Yuzora. But in reality, that defining act is in line with what destiny truly had in store for Sora, Yuzora, and the entirety of Kingdom Hearts. Is this the truth? Is this the design? That you must change fate in order to follow it? That breaking a taboo of nature, a forbidden act, was part of a higher plan? That the price and punishment of the power of waking exists in order to ensure destiny follows through? What did Yazora do in order to follow fate on his part to make it to the final world to encounter Sora? Did he too defy a destiny that was meant to be broken? This was meant to be, or was it? That is the Yazora Paradox. I hope you enjoyed this video. What is the truth? behind this paradox, if there is any. Leave your thoughts and theories in the comment section below and share up the video in order to keep the conversation going. Be sure to like and subscribe as I post Kingdom Hearts content every week. Big thanks to my Patreon supporters for help making this video happen. If you want to find out how you can support HMK for just a dollar a month, please check out my Patreon page. Alright guys, until the next 5th Dimension Kingdom Hearts 3 Reminded video, this has been HMK and I'll check you guys later. So you haven't subscribed to HMK yet. Don't piss Xemnas off.